Well, it, was, it wasn't a surprise. You know, I knew it was coming. Right? Um, very early on, someone asked one of the ministers, senior ministers, yeah? well, he did say, reported widely in, in, in the press, particularly in the social media, um, something to the effect that they wanted to change the speaker. Okay. Yeah? I wouldn't mention the name of this person. But I did say in response, I said, look, uh, you know, constitutionally, you cannot <laughs> remove the speaker just like that because there's a change of government midstream, yeah. you have to remove the speaker. Yes, it doesn't work out that way. And then a few days later, after my initial response, uh, a few weeks, I can't remember exactly, I think maybe a week later or two weeks later, um, another minister responded, yeah, saying that for the time being, all right, we will retain the speaker. I thought in my mind, this is not right. How can the executive be dictating yeah. uh, terms like that for the time being? In fact, I think it was an insult to the office of the speaker. Yeah. You know? So anyway, there were other instances, and blah, blah, blah. I met some people right to the top and uh, the senior ministers. And um, well, to cut the story short, uh, of course, I, I expected this to happen. I was given some inkling that it was going to happen. Um, and I myself have made it very clear to everyone concerned, everyone in authority concerned. I've got no problems uh, with you wanting to remove me, but do it the proper way, do it the constitutional way. If you want to remove me, pass a motion. In fact, just before the motion was yeah. in a file, I, I told them, uh, if you want to remove me, well, I gave them two, two choices. I said the most um, soft way of doing it is to allow the speaker and deputy speaker you, know, you don't like to continue until parliament is resolved. That is a proper way yeah, in the Westminster type parliament. But it is your decision. Ultimately, it is your political decision. If you feel that you need to remove the speaker, then Give me a motion, which I will sign immediately. I will approve your motion immediately, which they did. So I approve immediately. I have no problems with that. I say I've got no problems with it. You know, I'm doing this. I was doing the job as a service to the nation. You know, national service. So I've got no problems. If you feel that you don't need me, don't need me to carry on with the national service that I volunteered. Um, I'm okay with that. You know, I told them that. I, got, I can say this. Yeah, as a matter of principle, I think I should say this. I've got no problems with that. You know, because this is not a position that I lobbied for. Um, you know, it's not a position that I must have. Yeah. <laughs> right? uh, people persuaded me to assume the position of the speaker as a form of national service. Mm. That is why, I mean, to me, it's not... A, you know, major upset in my life. <laughs> you know, I keep telling all my friends who ask me. Even yesterday, I said, "No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm very relaxed about it." You know, um, very glad to be of service. Yeah, and very glad to be living. That's about it. So my good wishes to those who have assumed <laughs> the positions of the speaker and the deputy speaker, because the signs were there. Okay. You know, I'm not. A city lawyer, and I can read the signs. Huh? The signs were there, yeah. Um, very negative vibes. Yeah? So, but still, uh, I had well, hope against hope. I suppose that uh, maybe people people will see the sense of not removing a speaker midstream. Well, I don't think it is a black stain on my career. If other people think it is a black stain on my career, let them think that that is so. You know. But uh, I, I, I've always been kind of a courtroom lawyer, you know. So a courtroom lawyer has got very thick skin. <laughs> uh, uh, things like this, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I have faced worse situations. Yeah? Uh, I, I, I think my career perhaps has been boosted by this, <laughs> by this episode. Uh.